This video is going to cover our New Vintage USA diesel tachometer operation. Diesel tachometers. Tachometers for diesel applications operate a little differently than gasoline engines. Differences include, usually, a lower range for better resolution, no ignition source is available to pick up the signal, a sender is typically required to read the engine speed. Diesel engines use a sender that reads pulses from a crank or flywheel trigger. The signal is then picked up by the tachometer or sent to a PCM or engine management system for use, then the output from that computer to the tachometer. Special note, you cannot split a signal on any tachometer sender, tach, PCM, etc. That will degrade the signal and not be readable. So for example, if you have a uh, one of these uh, crank triggers here, and one feeds the PCM and one feeds a sh maybe a, a control circuit or something like that, you cannot pick up the, the tachometer signal off something that's already being read. It'll have to be picked up somewhere else. And here's just a few images of some uh, crank and flywheel triggers. Uh, crank sensors generate an AC sine wave signal by having a sensor pick up pulses from a tooth rotating wheel on the engine. This can be a separate wheel or a gear driven or even the starter teeth on the flywheel. This can be on the crankshaft flywheel, on the balancer, or even the, the uh, camshaft. For example, over here we see it where a cam sensor would have a similar type of thing. What is important if using the sensor is knowing how many pulses per revolution or teeth there are. So there may be you know, 60 on a flywheel, 20 on a cam. It just really depends. That's something that, that's really helpful when setting this up. Some system uses information to a PCM, which uses the vehicle, uh, the vehicle and the uh, engine speed to run additional items such as injectors, things like that. The signal may require additional conditioning to read from the PCM. So for example, a GM, PCM, gas and diesel uh, all output a four cylinder, which is two pulses per revolution open collector signal. This will require a 10K pull up resistor uh, to be in installed and operate properly. Uh, which all of the new Vintage USA uh, gauge kits include this pull-up resistor if needed. Uh, so, for, so here on the right, you can see an example of um, how this system works. So we've got the uh, crank, uh, crank signal sent to the PCM. Uh, then the PCM outputs the signal to the speedometer and tachometer. Pretty straightforward. Uh, what's great about this is it's really easy for the tachometer to read. Uh, in this system, uh, the signal needs to come from a PCM or separate sender, since there is no ignition source. There are some really nice aftermarket solutions to mount to the front of the engine if needed. Uh, you can see a couple of them at the right here. Uh, new Vintage USA tachometers will require a signal, AC sine wave, or Hall effect, and it cannot be less than one and a half volts. This can be easily checked with a multimeter that's not connected to the tachometer at the time. Um, there's lots of videos. Uh, we have some tech information on our website about how to check that if you need to. Uh, three wire senders are Hall effect and output a five or 12 volt square wave signal that uh, new vintage USA tach tachometers read easily. Uh, again, that's identified by the three wires. Um, the uh, AC sine wave is identified by two wires. Uh, the alternator or W terminal is also sometimes used to pick up the tachometer signal. New Vintage USA does not recommend using this signal for engine speed for several reasons. First one is the alternator condition. Is it new? Is it used? Has it been rebuilt? Um, the number of poles, it could be 6, 8, 12. Uh, it just depends. And a lot of times the end user doesn't know any of this information, so it makes it very hard to set this up. Uh, there's also a crank and alternator pulley ratio uh, calculation that needs to be done to determine the uh, what the tachometer should be sent to, set to. And uh, unfortunately, if you choose to use the W terminal, uh, we cannot guarantee the tachometer will operate properly and not be damaged. So uh, we do this a lot on marine applications and new uh, military builds where it's all new components. We know what the terminal is, we know what the output is. However, in the aftermarket side, we just don't know what we're dealing with. So it's really, really hard to set these up. Uh, as far as the wiring goes, all new Vintage USA gauges uh, have dual read instruction sheets. The booklets show the item and connection in the, in the chart, along with a diagram in color. 
New Vintage USA recommends using a minimum 20 gauge wire on all installations. Keep all wires away from electronic sources of noise such as pulse senders, fans, relays, etc. Uh, with the tachometers being so sensitive, uh, it's real easy to pick up extra noise and have an erratic or an accurate tachometer. So just keep that signal wire separate. Uh, use caution when wiring and checking uh, the colors of each before the final connections are completed. So keep an eye on the blacks and the browns. Uh, make sure we're not mixing those up. Uh, after wiring, the pulse settings and filters need to be set up for your application. You do need to know the number of pulses per revolution to set this up correctly. Uh, the filters can also be set. It's best to start on the L or low setting uh, as the tax center is usually a low voltage signal. You can experiment with these settings uh, for optimal use. Uh, all the diesel tacks all ship on the low setting uh, to get you going. Uh, to set the uh, pulses, uh, hold in the remote programming button while turning on the key. The vehicle does not have to be running. This will get you into the setup mode. Scroll to manual calibrate by tapping the button to scroll through the menu items. Stop at manual calibrate. Hold in the button for about a second and release and then the current pulse setting will be shown just like that. Each number must be selected and saved. To do this, tap the button until the desired digit is shown, then hold the button until the next digit is highlighted. So here we're just scrolling through the numbers. We're gonna hold it in until it moves to the next one. There we go, now we're gonna tap the button to scroll through. We're gonna reset this one just back to five where we, where we uh, ship them at. Four, five, zero, I'll go all the way to zero. Okay, we're gonna hold in the button. And then it'll go on to the next number. The next number is highlighted. We're gonna just reset that to five, so we're just gonna hold it in. Set yes, you can select no if you want. Saved. And then to save the setting, we're just gonna power cycle the gauge. And you can, you can change this at any time in the future. You can fine tune it. You change the engine, change something, change the engine management, uh, pick the sender up somewhere else. You can do this at any time. So to change the input filters, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold in the button while turning on the key. We're gonna go into the setup mode and then we're gonna scroll by tapping the button to get to the input filter. Then we're gonna hold in the button. And now we're into the menu where it says set filter low. It may say medium, it may say high. We ship all the gauges on low. Once in the input filter menu, we're gonna select the desired setting. So we can choose low, medium, or high. And you can experiment with these as you see fit to fine tune your, your installation. Uh, you can do this while the vehicle's running uh, and stationary. What's great about that is once it's set, you can play around with it to see what kind of reaction you're getting. So we're gonna set it on there. We're gonna hit set, hold in the button until it says yes or no, yes. We're gonna hold in the button again. Saved, now that filter is active. Now you can go ahead and rev the engine, see how it operates. You can keep repeating the process without restarting the gauge of the vehicle. You can do it as many times as you want for optimum performance. So just to wrap this up, to properly set the, the PPR, you must know the pulses the engine will be outputting. This can be the number of teeth on the crank trigger. Vehicle PCMs will have different outputs than the crank trigger. For example, the GM Duramax PCM outputs a four cylinder signal, which is two PPR, when there's probably 108 teeth on, or you know, 80 or 100 teeth on the, uh, on the flywheel. Uh, so that's been conditioned from the PCM to be output. While the L or low filter is usually adequate, filter adjustments can be tried at any time. Feel free to experiment, you won't hurt anything. And then do not connect the diesel tachometer to a coil output or other high energy signal. The sensitive circus circuit will be damaged as a result. So uh, these, these tachometers don't have a lot of protection on the input uh, circuit just because they have to be so sensitive. So uh, you know anything other than a uh, PCM or a, uh, a low voltage uh, crank pickup could damage it. So no coils here. 
And if you have any questions, feel free to get with us. You can call us 248-850-5082, email us at service at newvintageusa.com, or send us a message on Facebook or Instagram anytime, and uh, we'll, we'll be more than happy to help you out. Thanks for watching.